సార్ ఏ పార్త జాయిన్ అయ్యారు సార్ మీరు టి శ్రీరామ్మూర్తి మధ్యలో ఫుల్ స్టాప్ ఉందా సార్ ఏమన్నా anniversary celebrations of sri sinvas ramanujan our department of mathematics bapatla engineering college bapatla is organizing a one week online international workshop on enhancing computational skills of mathematics in various fields of engineering from 18th to 23rd december 2023 on the first day that is 18th december 2023 Dr. L. Jagannathan, sir, Professor, School of Computer Science and Engineering, Valir Institute of Technology, Chennai, delivered a talk on Support Vector Machine, a classifier. On the second day, that is 19th December 2023, Dr. P. Nagarani Garu, Senior Lecturer, Department of Mathematics, the University of the West Indies, Mona Campus, Jamaica, West Indies, delivered a talk on Mathematical Models in Engineering. On the third day, that is... 20th December 2023, Dr. Vyan Redigaru, Professor of Professor Emeritus, Department of Mathematics, NIT Warangal, delivered a talk on Mathematics for Robust Computing. On the fourth day, that is 21st November 2023, Dr. M.A. Srinivas Garu, Professor Emeritus, Department of Mathematics, j and University College of Engineering, Science and Technology, Hyderabad, delivered a talk on Visualization of Mathematical Concepts. On the fifth day, that is 22nd December 2023, Dr. G.Y. Sagar, Professor, Department of Statistics, College of Natural and Computational Sciences, Gambelia University, Ethiopia, delivered a talk on Introduction to Statistical Inference. For all the above five days, each session is engaged with approximately 850 participants. Thank you one and all for your good response and valuable support. Today is the final day of our one week online international workshop and today's speaker is Dr. T.S.R. Murthigaru, Professor, Department of Mathematics and Statistics, Sri Vishnu Engineering College for Women, Bhimavaram, West Godavari District, AP. Now I request one of our staff organizers, Mrs. K. Nagamani, present <laughs> profile of Dr. T.S.R. Murthigaru. Good evening, all. Welcome you all to a one week online international workshop on enhancing computational skills of mathematics in various fields of engineering. It's my privilege to introduce today's resource, resource person, Dr. T.S.R. Murthy Garu. Dr. T.S.R. Murthy Sar is a professor and head department of mathematics and statistics, Sri Vishnu Engineering College for Women, Bhimavaram, AP. He did his MSc in Statistics and PhD in Queuing Models from Andhra University, Visakhapatnam, in the year 1994 with the thesis entitled Some Waiting Line Models with Bulk Services. He published 12 research papers in national and international journals and presented 8 research papers in international conferences. He authored 3 books, 1 book chapter and 2 are in pipeline to his credit. 
he has organized five national workshops and one short term training program he got best seminar award for year 2012 best guest lecture award for the year 2014 and 2016 in the field of probability and statistics and operation research from patna sri dr bb raju institute of computer educational affiliated to adikavi nanaya university he is a member of several academic committees and also conducted various surveys which are useful to enhance the performance of the existing systems dr muthi garu is appreciated by one and all with his best way of teaching for the last three decades his contributions to the department and college are remarkable his helping nature his inspiring character teaching abilities and research capabilities additional qualities apart from his goodness and vast experience in the field of education thank you all thank you mrs nagamani for your nice introduction about sri murthy garu now i hand over the session to dr t s r murthy garu to deliver his lecture on descriptive statistics analyzing and visualizing data sir murthy garu please okay sir thank you sir thank you so good afternoon to one and all i am glad to be a part of uh, this program i thank college management for choosing me as a resource person for this session i thank uh, my sincere thanks to convener and hod kvl and uh, dr kvl and acharya garu and uh, co convener dr p vijay sardi garu and the organizing committee members and uh, I, i also thank uh, mrs k nagamani staff organizer to introduce me thank you one and all all of you thank you now i am sharing my ppt sir okay sir sir welcome to all the participants and the other persons and staff members sir the importance of uh, today's session my session in two hour session i cover the topics uh, of the importance of statistics after that uh, the descriptive statistics and the measures of central tendency in this uh, the importance of statistics is statistics is amazing because it has many diversifications from such results on google and bing to recommendations for what you should be shopping on amazon if you are watching youtube video and at the end you get recommendations for other videos statistics is used to give those recommendations it has many applications uh, seen in statistics uh, in ice skating agriculture and in climate forecasting also statistics can actually be anything that you like anything that you enjoy anything you want to do and anything that you are passionate about you can take statistics and it fits and it is used to analyze the dna uh, and find the genes uh, that are related to the cancer now look at around you wherever you are there is a data and there is an information whatever you are passionate our statistics will be involved so today in two hour session i cover the following topics introduction to basic statistics methods of central tendency mean median and mode in general we are using the terms mean median mode how it uh, will uh, find the mean median mode in general and in the subject wise also in the coming to the subject wise there is an enormous amount of data coming from both inside and outside the organization that means the enormous data the large amount of data is coming from inside and outside the organization 
in this the majority of this data is unstructured but the organization had trapped it for analysis purpose if the data's meaning is not uh, properly understood and the analysis findings are not properly communicated to the audience the data is useless in this this is the data we don't know about uh, the data related to which field so we can't do anything with this uh, data this uh, this is also one of the type data players are there minutes points rebounds assists and some data are numerals also there and some question marks are also there some uh, empty spaces also there in this uh, we are we want to edit this data first of all for analyzing the data we want to edit the data and i will explain in the coming slides and coming to the data exploration and visualization data exploration is about searching the data for meaning that is the very important point data exploration is about searching the data for meaning whereas data visualization is communicating the meaning of the data to the concerned audience that is very important data exploration and visualization is the about searching the data for meaning and the visualization visualization is pictographical representation of the data which is easily understood by the uh, viewers so in this uh, pictographical data there are this is the bar charts this is the straight line fitted by the uh, two dimensional points it is a line this is also bar bar, bar chart and this is a curl line curves and all these are the graphs visualization the visualization will easily identify which one is higher which one is lower or which one is shorter and which color is higher like that in this uh, this is also in the pie chart this is the pie chart in this pie chart there are only two parameters are there one is the related to black color and the other is related to blue green uh, yellow color so in this uh, we are easily identify that uh, one fourth of the part covered by black color and three fourth of the part covered by the yellow color here in this also there are one two three four five colors are there so of these so we can uh, easily guessing about the information which has five parameters like that the visualization helps us to easily identify the data some characteristics these are also some data which moves from time time bound also in this one this is a the visualization of data various data and with the help of this visualization we can easily identify of this this data this is the smallest one and which related to which field whatever the parameters are there so we can easily identify here and the comparison of the blue and the pink color we are easily identified so the pictographical representation the visualization of data gives a clear cut idea about the data so to analyze vast volumes of data and make data driven decisions data visualization tools and technologies are crucial in the big data usage nowadays we are using the big data data analytics like that data science all these are related to the with the help of the statistics we can analyze uh, this data data exploration and visualization help the business managers uh, to take uh, decisions for example in this uh, example an apartment has 45 flats with the following number of family members of each flat the apartment has 45 flats with the following number of family mem- members of each flat in this uh, there are 45 flats of these 45 flats first flat having two family members second flat having one family member third flat having three family members and so on the fourth the fifth flat number having four members now we can analyze this data we study various techniques for exploring and summarizing the data as well as different methods of presenting the data now we will discuss with this problem with this example various types of exploration of the data and visualization of the data 
Now coming to the collection of data. Collection of data. This is the main important point in the in any inquiry. The collection of figures or data or the information is the very first step in an inquiry. The collection of information. In this, uh, this is the various uh, uh, sources of information collected. The data which is related to some particular points or some parameters. We want to find the uh, how many persons having uh, the mobile phones nowadays and how many persons having uh, same network mobile phones and how many persons having uh, uh, same company of mobiles like that, uh, that parameter we are collecting the data. Let us assume that. So collection, the collection of figures or information is the very first. This is the survey data collection. The survey data collection in the net source because it gives a more clear idea about the subject. That's why I collect the information from the net source and I will create some, I am, I am also create some pictures also. If you have any doubts, anytime uh, you ask, uh, ask me. Okay. Now in this survey data collection, in general, in uh, every college, some student that third year or second year students collecting data. Generally, you are also involved in that one. I thought, I think that. So this is one of the online survey. This is the telephonic survey. This is the paper survey. This is the face to face survey. This is the face to face survey. This is the survey data collection. And this is the collection of data from person to person. She collects the data from the other three persons also from particular uh, data, particular uh, point of collection. So these are the data collected from the sources like uh, books, journals, net. We are collecting the information from the books also, journals also, and uh, net, uh, and uh, this type of collection. Now the collection of data are of two types. One is the primary data and the second, uh, second, and the second one is the secondary data. Sir, is it audible my voice? Please respond. Students, please respond. Sir, very clear, sir. Go ahead, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. So, we are collecting the data from this uh, uh, sources, from these sources, this, these sources. That means the, we are collecting the data from the sources of uh, books or net, already existed data and uh, journals also. This type of data is called the secondary data. We are collecting the data from the existed source. That is the secondary data. Whereas in the case of, uh, we are in this case, uh, the data is called the primary data. The primary data is the first hand data, that is the raw data. So that is the primary data. There are two types of uh, data are there. One is the primary data and the second one is the secondary data. So we are collecting the entire data in a system or in a um, bookshelf. So in this collection of data, the, we are collected this data. Now, what are the steps? We are analyzing this data. How can you analyze this data? The collected data, how can you analyze? So first of all, I will explain this one. The data to be collected are generally of two types. Again, the primary data and the secondary data primary data and a, collect and a secondary data. These are the primary data, survey, questionnaires. This is the first-hand information. Primary data is the first-hand information that is not available to any others that have having the only the investigator or those who conduct the, uh, take the information, having the only primary data. So that data is the survey, survey or questionnaire or observation from the source and the experimentation in labs we are experimentation that results are uh, the primary data or interview face to face interview that is the primary data whereas in the case of secondary data that secondary data comes from literature survey or the libraries you are taking the information from libraries also and the government database government database now the total number of waters today as per today the total number of uh, uh, waters in the ap state or in bapatla uh, constituency, they are having the 
government having the database so if you are collecting that information from the government uh, you that is the uh, your collected data is the secondary data from the government okay and the commercial data this is the commercial database we are collecting already existed data we are collecting from that uh, organization and web scraping this is uh, uh, the net internet uh, we are uh, taking the information from the internet that is the secondary data this is the primary data any doubts from this one students please so primary data is the original data which are collected and recorded by the investigator primary data is the original data which are collected and recorded by the investigator and are utilized as raw material for his inquiry so this is the primary data and first of all the collected data what will how can you analyze this collected data that can be shown in the next slides so primary data is the original data which are collected and recorded by the investigators and are utilized as raw material for his inquiry secondary sir, data. yes sir we look konjam uh, pillalu majjadra disturbance unda dan mute chesam present chevarla question and answer session pedadam sir ఓకే సార్ ఓకే సార్ ఓకే సార్ అందుకని వాళ్ళు రెస్పాండ్ కావడం లేదు మ్యూట్ లో పెట్టాం వాళ్ళు ఓకే సార్ ఓకే సార్ ఓకే ఎవరు అడుగుదాం సార్ क्वेश्चन అన్న ఓకే సార్ థాంక్యూ సార్ ఓకే సార్ థాంక్యూ సార్ దిస్ డేటా గివ్స్ us the first hand information and have not been worked up before secondary data which is already collected and recorded by another person or investigators for their own purpose now take this collected data for some purpose then this collected data from the first person or investigator is called the secondary data however data which are secondary for one may be the primary for another because first they are collected after that from them we are collecting the data some of the examples from the secondary data published official reports local government institutions journals research papers business and commercial bureaus like that we are collecting the second data then data is called the secondary data so after collecting the data we are classified and tabulated the data in a systematic manner the after collecting the data we are classified and the tabulated in a systematic manner how it is such data lose their original individual character and uh, are worked up for a purpose the collected data classified tabulated and presented in a suitable manner to serve the required uh, purpose so data editing next uh, after collecting the data we are uh, edit the first uh, first of all we would, uh, do the thing is uh, edit the data data editing because uh, it has uh, so many mistakes are there collection in the collection time there are so many mistakes may be taken place that's why so we want to edit in the first uh, slide we show that uh, in the data there are question marks there are em uh, empty boxes are there so that uh, that is uh, missing uh, terms are there so that's why we are edit the data statistical information provided by business can contain errors such as wrong information or wrong uh, taking uh, um, uh, information and missing data incorrect classification inconsistent or illogical uh, responses that is the uh, errors in the data how to minimize these one to maximize the effectiveness of ex ante collection procedure also we want to modify the collection procedure and take uh, utmost care for the collection procedure ex post application of robust data editing techniques so we are editing after editing we are classify the data how we can classify the data first of all collecting the data and editing the data next one is the classification of the data the collected data by the above method should be scrutinized before they are adapted for any use it is very essential to know the errors or inconsistencies which have crept into the data so de defective information should be rejected or sent back for necessary corrections it may be noted that the presentation and the analysis of the data will be of no use if editing is not done properly that is very important 
for example at this presentation of this this ppt i am taking so many so much of time for editing classification all that and collecting the pictures also so this is the classification of the data in this classification you observe this one this is the collection collection the, this is the collected data from this collected data i am express explaining you by the pictographical presentation because it can, it can the visualization that's why you are easily grasp the situation otherwise i am giving any problems or numerical loss you are not show your interest on this occasion so that that's why i am give you the pictorial picture data collection data here in this data how many members are there that is my question and uh, what is your uh, analysis for this data that is my question so for this uh, we are this is the collected data in this data first of all we are uh, any errors are there that the errors are uh, reduce or eliminate the errors and that means the editing the data after that classification we are taking the classification that means all colors blue colors how many blue colors are there 1 2 3 4 blue colors yellow uh, green 1 2 3 4 green black 1 2 3 4 5 6 7. so we are classify the data by colors here now we are easily total we are easily identify the total number of strength and how many colors same colors are there we are easily after classification we are easily identifying here four blue color six black color green blue like that pink colors we are easily identify after classification so this is the before the classification the data is a raw data this is the edited data and this is the classified data classification according to the colors so this is the collection of the data and the classification of the data both are shown at the same time for easy understanding so now classification what is the classification classification is the process by which individuals and items are arranged into groups or classes according to their resemblance here uh, in the previous picture the in the resemblance means colors we are uh, separate with the colors so classification is the process by which individuals and items are arranged into groups or classes according to their resemblance because this is very important topic for uh, the csc and it and those who want to go for uh, software jobs some of the software employees are asked me about the how to classify the data uh, how can you you know analyze this data they are asking frequently so that's why i am covering all these topics for this session classification is the process by which individuals and uh, individuals and items are arranged into groups or classes this is very important one in the group frequency table that's why here classes we are arranging into classes according to their uh, resemblance it is the process by which the similar and dissimilar things are arranged and condensed into their respective groups in an orderly manner and a logical manner classification makes the data understandable the classification means the data understandable so there are two types of uh, classification classification according to characteristics and uh, numericals so classification according to attributes characteristics means attributes and uh, classification according to the numerical characteristics here numerical characteristics according to attributes that attributes means that is uh, the uh, qualitative measure that is uh, classification the entire indian people can be classified into the according to attributes that means the men or women or according to sex or according to religion all these are coming under uh, the attributes in which data are classified by descriptive characteristics so classification is done according to sex caste literacy drinking habit etc this is again two types classification is of two types this is the classification the population of indian population or the world population is divided into two parts major we are considering the male and female and uh, in the male there are literates and illiterates suppose uh, in the literates uh, how many uh, the 
religion regarding religion hindu muslim christian like that in, the, in the illiterates also we can again split into the illiterates various categories like that so this is the classification according to the attributes only so classification according to attributes in, is given again two ways this is attributes again again two ways that is uh, one is the simple classification and the second one is the manifold classification simple classification is uh, the only with one attribute you can classify only two items like that here the population can be divided into male and female or male is divided into above 50 years and below 50 years less than or equal to 50 years all are female female also above less uh, for 25 and uh, below 25 less than or equal to 25 years we can split to only two outcomes so here in this classification each class is subdivided into such as males and females blind and uh, not blind hit the target or miss the target educated and un uneducated pass or fail hit the target and miss that and so on this is the simple classification these are the examples of simple classification if you have any doubt please note it and then after that uh, uh, dear students please uh, note down whatever your doubts uh, in uh, book after the query you can ask all the doubts okay and manifold classification in this manifold classification the classes are divided in more than two subclasses more than two subclasses in this classification the class is subdivided into more than two subclasses which may be subdivided further also so the population may be classified into males and females which may be subdivided into other categories such as hindus muslims literates illiterates like that so like that this is the manifold classification and coming to the numerical classification numerical classification related to the numerical numerals that means age age of the students or age of the parents or age of the people or heights of the people or weights of the people like that that classification is called uh, the numerical characteristics classification in this classification the group is arranged in an orderly manner and then grouped into those classes which are uh, which fall in class intervals age group age group class interval so and so age group or so and so marks uh, the student got so and so marks in this class interval like that that is the numerical classification so here in this picture the heights of the students he measured the heights of the students so heights in centimeters number of students so 160 to 164 40 students are there 165 to 169 15 students are there and so on 180 to 184 centimeters uh, two students are there this is the classification according to their heights so it is a numerical classification this is also this is also numerical classification because we are in our coastal area side that's why so many farmers are doing cultivation on aquaculture that's why here i gave this example this picture in this the regarding to weights are the length of the fishes they are separate classified their length of the fishes or weights of the fishes are classified that classification comes under a uh, numerical and uh, in this one the plants the farmers grow the how much length the plant is grown like that they are measured the length of in so and so months or so and so years like that so that means statistics is everywhere wherever you are there statistics is there now after classification now coming to the tabulation this is the systematic procedure collection of the data then editing of the data next one is classification of the data and next one is the tabulation of the data after classification present the classified data in tabular form how can you represent this tabular form i will explain with the examples also arranging in rows and columns in tabular form first of all we are taking the precaution for the arranging in rows and columns and the, the intervals of length and split the data into headings and subheadings the tabulation 
so here one example classify and tabulate according to the class intervals the following data giving marks of a batch of 50 students 50 students marks suppose in your section having 50 students and their marks are given like this now how can you represent this data into a tabular form how can you classify this data into tabular form now arrange this data in ascending order of their magnitude first of all the given data can be ascend uh, arranged in ascending order of their magnitude in this uh, the minimum is uh, maybe 25 and the maximum is uh, 80 something 82 so after that uh, after that uh, this is 25 and 82 now the range of this data is 85 minus 25 that is uh, 57 the range of the data minimum is this one maximum is this one the range of the data is 57 now in the tabular form how many how much length of the class intervals you can find the table how much length suppose the width of the class is 10 let us assume that 10 suppose let's assume that the width of the class is 10 that means your lower limit is 25, 25 to 35, 35 to 45, and so on, 82, 85, maybe. So, how, how we can uh, arrange this one? How to construct the table? There are 50 items in this group. The lowest mark is 25, and the highest mark is 82. These marks can be arranged into the following six classes. So, there are two types of construction of tabular forms here, again. Again, there are two types of construction of tabular forms. That is, uh, one is the exclusive method and the other one is the inclusive method. Exclusive method means the continuous method and the uh, inclusive method means uh, the lower and upper limits are included in that uh, class interval. If any observation falls in that interval, we consider in the inclusive method both the lower and upper limit are taking as consideration. Whereas in the exclusive method, only we are taking the lower limit only and excluding the upper limit that is the x x show the, the table the exclusive method it is a method of classification of given data in such a manner that the upper limit of one class becomes the lower limit of the next class the upper limit of the one class upper limit is in this class 0 to 10 class 0 is the lower limit and 10 is the upper limit in the in this class 10 is the lower limit and 20 is the upper limit in this 20 to 30 class 20 is the lower limit 30 is the upper limit and so on so in this in this classification the data in such a manner that the upper limit of class this upper limit of one class is the lower limit of the next class this is the upper limit of this this class this is the lower limit of the next class this is the upper limit of one class lower limit of the next class so that is the inclusive uh, exclusive method. The upper limit is excluded. In this case, the upper limit is excluded, but the lower limit is included in the class interval. This method is most appropriate for data of continuous variables. And we are using this uh, uh, technique only, exclusive technique only for finding the median mode problems. And whereas in the case of uh, continuous case, uh, continuous, uh, that means uh, uh, inclusive case, uh, we are taking only in the too many less is not valid. So you are taking properly. The minimum mark is 25 and the maximum mark is 82. Therefore, the range is 57. Now we are setting the class interval. Let the class interval be 10. Then the 57 divided by 10, that is approximately equal to 5, 5 point, that is 5.7, that is approximately equal to 6 classes. They are now you are arranged six classes because you are uh, assume that the width of the class is uh, 10. If you are taking the width of the class is 5, then 5 means 5 points, uh, 5, 5, 5, 57. So that uh, that is uh, 11.2. Approximately 11 classes or 12 classes you are taking. Here only six classes because the length of the class is uh, 10. And uh, now we shall classify into six groups. That is, the minimum is 25 and the maximum is 82. So that's why those two are included in this class group. 
so that is 25 to 35 35 to 45 45 to 55 and so on 75 to 85 all the 15 members uh, are involved in this uh, classes in these classes all the 50 members so this is the this in this class this is the lower limit this is the upper limit in this class this is the lower limit this is the upper limit in this the upper limit of this class is the lower limit of the next class upper limit of this class is the lower limit of the next class and so on the 75 is the upper limit of the this class and uh, that 75 is the lower limit of the next class this is called the exclusive method if we suppose in the data 35 is there that 35 is not included in this uh, class that 35 is you are put in this class only 35 to 45 that means you are put to only 25 and less than 35 up to 34 only here 35 to up 44 only and here 45 to 54 only and so on we are excluding 55 we are excluding 65 in upper limit case that's why it is called the exclusive method the number of students who got 25 marks and above, but below 35, is four members are there. Similarly, the number of students who got 35 marks and above, but below 45, is seven members. I will show all these. The number of students who got 45 marks and below 55 is 15 members, and so on. Now I will show with the different colors. These are the 35, 25 to 35, one color. 35 to 45, another color. 45 to 55, another color. So, in the first group, there are four. The frequency of the class is four. This class, 25 to 35 frequency is, this, this is called frequency. 25 to 35 is th uh, four. And uh, 35 to 45, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven members are there. And 45 to 55, there are, we'll see that uh, how many members are there. And 55 to 65, how many members are there, we'll see in this one, the table form. This can be shown in the distribution of marks. Uh, by the class intervals 25 to 35 35 to 45 45 to 55 55 to 65 and so on and the corresponding frequencies are there 4 25 to 35 4 members are there 35 to 45 7 members are there and so on there are two total 50 so this 50 students are uh, distributed to various class intervals as uh, frequencies so this is the called the tabular form of the given 50 students marks and in this uh, class interval that lower limit of the class intervals are called the lower limit. 25, 35, 45 are the lower limit. And the upper limits are the right hand side are the upper limits and left hand side are the lower limits. Inclusive method. In this inclusive method, I already told to you, 44, this, this upper limit is not equal to the lower limit. Here, that means 25 and 34 are taking in this uh, interval only. If the observation 34 is there, then we are put in this class interval. 35 put in this uh, class interval. Uh, 34 put in this class interval. Similarly, 44 also put in this class interval and so on. That's why this is called the inclusive method. Both the upper and lower limit are inclusive. Both upper and lower limits are included in this one. So this is called the inclusive method. But it is not suggestible because if the observation is 34.5, where you can put 34.5, that's why exclusive method is better than the inclusive method. This is 34 point, suppose, this 34.5 is there. Where you can put the, post the 34.5, that's why we are using the exclusive method. And now this inclusive method is also exclusive method by taking in the difference of these two, 34 and 35, or 44 to 45, the green colors or the red colors, difference is one. The average of one is one by two, that is 0.5. So we are adding 0.5 to 34, 34, 34.5, and uh, subtract 0.5, 35, that is 34.5. So here 34.5, here 34.5. Similarly, here we are adding 0.5 here and we are subtracting 0.5 here so that it is 44.5 and this is also 44.5. So now that uh, inclusive method is converted into exclusive method. Okay. The benefit I will show it. In the inclusive method, continuity of the class interval seems to be lost. So this method is not uh, generally used. And uh, this is uh, groups, uh, 
are called class intervals 25 to 35 35 45 and so on are called the class intervals the range between the limits of uh, a class interval is called the magnitude or interval of length that is the range the range can be converted uh, uh, measured as the lower limits difference of the two constitutive lower limits in the range or the magnitude of the class the comparison between only please listen carefully the uh, want to find the length of the class is we uh, we find the difference between the lower limits of any consecutive class intervals or the upper limits of any class any consecutive classes the difference only taking but the upper limit and lower limit difference is not correct magnitude of a class interval is found by subtracting the lower limit of the group from the lower limit of the next group or upper limit of the group or the upper limit of the next group so the magnitude of 25 34 this is the inclusive method the magnitude is that it is here 9 34 minus 25 9 that is not correct but the next class is 25 to 34 next class is 35 to 44 so the difference is 35 and 25 is 10 that is the magnitude of that class interval of group interval of group lower limit of the next group and lower limit of the that group the number of observations in each group is called the frequency of the group the number of observations in each group is called the frequency of the group so this is the frequency distribution the frequency distribution the total frequency 50 the total 50 is distributed to various classes 25 to 35 and 35 to 45 and so on this is the construction of the frequency distribution and uh, the group data should not uh, look very small or very large and uh, here the important points are arrange the data in ascending order class limit should be so fixed as to display the main characteristics of the distribution accurately the magnitude of the class interval should be determined in accordance with the size of the data it should be neither very large nor very small these are the precautions the class interval should be of uniform magnitude and the class limit should preferably be integers the group data should not look very small or very large indeterminate class such as like this under 10 10 to 15 and above 25 like that it is not valid and uh, the second method is tally marks method that is one method of uh, construction of table and the second method is the tally marks method in this tally marks method i will explain with the example uh, that a tally is denoted by a slash or a stroke this is also known as a stroke in uh, short uh, short language that is short hand language stroke this is called short, uh, stroke a tally denoted by symbol stroke a small vertical line so by this method tally marks method it is very easy to uh, form the tabular form so if the number data is maximum data then we can use the tally marks method this is single tally is there one and two tallies are there two and four are four and five five is this type of a tally after four we draw a line here or strike a four lines strike this one this is the five and this is the seven five plus two seven and so on so here we are constructing the table same example this can be shown in this uh, tally marks method so 25 to 34 here the inclusive method i am taking this is four observations are there the four observations four tallies are there and uh, 35 to 44 seven tallies are there like that this is the tally marks method this is simple compared to the previous one suppose 250 students are there then we can easily construct a table by tally marks measures of central tendency this is a very important one measures of central tendency in this uh, we are discussed about uh, the mean median and mode 
in general you know that the mean mean is the sum of all the observation divided by the total number of observations and uh, there are two types of data are there one is the grouped data and the ungrouped data there are two types of data grouped data and ungrouped data we are measure the mean or median mode in the two ways suppose in this uh, the measures of central tendency in the measures of central tendency for easy identification of data there are various ways of giving an overview of the given data one way is by graphical representation and the other way by numerical representation a measure of central tendency is a single representative expression a measure of central tendency is a single representative expression of the data given data now the single representation of the data now consider the heights here the first person height is 150 cm second person height is 160 cm and so on the fifth person height is 180 cm now the average height you already know that the sum of all the observation divided by the total number of observations so that is uh, the sum of all the observation is 840 divided by 5 that is approximately equal to 171 171 maybe so he, this is the average line the white line is the average line sum of the that average means sum of the members having less than average height and uh, sum of the height having the same height same average point and sum of the persons having more than the average height so this is the average height represents a single representation of this one that means each person has the same height let us assume that uh, 5 7 8 40 5 that is approximately 71 50 like that it is not visible clearly mm. so that is the average height so the average height we are also finding the average height because of pictographic representation catchy eye catchy that's why i am using these pictures so who want to find there are so many this is the data collection of data arrange in height order we can arrange this picture also uh, gathered from net also arrange the data who want to find uh, the pictorial uh, mean mean of the data pictorially that is uh, catch uh, eye catching and uh, easily catching uh, our mind that's why i am using this one the height the average height we want to find the in this uh, height uh, mean median mode so the heights we are ascending order of magnitude we are arranging them in ascending order of magnitude the first person height is 1.5 second person height is 1.55 1.6 1.6 1.6 and so on 1.9 now the average height of these one this is the ungrouped data there are two types of data are there this is ungrouped data that means the numbers are given there is no tabular form if tabular form is there that means uh, the corresponding frequency is also there tabular form consisting of lower and upper limit then that is a grouped data this is ungrouped data now the sum of all the observation divided by the total number of observation gives the average height of the persons and uh, the mean median median now the median okay just uh, before this uh, the mean want to find the mean mean is the sum of all the observation divided by the total number of observations now we will get one single value that value represents the average height of this entire group of the students or entire group of these persons the average height that means that implicates that uh, this person is the same height all are equal height suppose in your classroom the average mark in your classroom means the average mark in your classroom means all the students got the same mark but really some students got more than the average mark and some students got less than the average mark and some students got the same mark so that's why here this is the we want to find the mean height of the people and the now coming to the median i will explain to the next one again the median median height median is the arranging the data in ascending order of magnitude and this median divides the data into two parts divides the data into two equal parts that is the importance of median so here 
1.5, and so on. And this one, 1.9, 1.85, 1.85, and so on, like this. This 1.65, this person having split the entire data into two parts because about her left side, one, two, three, four, five. Five members are there. Here also one, two, one, two, three, four, five. So that uh, this person, I am talking about the persons only, not numerals. After that, I will talk to you about numerals. So person, this person divides the two groups. The she she uh, divides the entire data into two groups. That means that person is the median person. That is the and now coming to the numerical numerals, this 1.65 is the middle of the middlemost term of uh, all the data. We are arranging this data in ascending order of their magnitude. Then this 1.65 is the middlemost term. That middlemost term is the median. And mode. In this mode, mode means maximum number of repeated a number. In the case of uh, ungrouped data. In the case of ungrouped data, mode is the maximum number of repeated a number. So here 1.5 is uh, repeated only one time. 1.55 is also one time. 1.6, 1.6, 1.6. 1.6 1 repeated three times. 1.65, 1.75, 1.8, 1.85, 1.85, 1.9. 1 1 so here 1.85 is repeated two times. Of all these uh, Repeated number of uh, members are 1.85, two times, 1.6, three times. So that uh, the maximum number of repeated number is the mode. So here mode is uh, the 1.6. 1.6 is the mode. So more people are 1.6 meters uh, than any other persons compared to height. So if mean, median, mode coming to in your second year classes uh, are normal distribution, in normal distribution, mean equal to median equal to mode. That means all the three are equal. So here the mid mode equal to 1.6. So here mean equal to 1.7, median equal to 1.65, mode equal to 1.6. This is the mode, maximum number of times repeated a number. This is the 1.7 is the average height of this uh, people, this people average height. These people are less than the average height. These people are less than the average height. And uh, these people are more than the average height. So some people are lesser than, or some people are greater than, and some people are the same. So that's why the mean is 1.7, 1.6 is the mode, and 1.65 is the median. And now coming to the, the measures of central tendency gives an overall idea about the data. That is the average, the average. This is the data the plot, the scattered data can represent it. That means this is the average. Suppose let us assume that this is the average of this entire data. That means some points below this average point and some points are on the average point and some points are above the average point. For easy identification of data, there are various ways of giving an overview of the given data. One way is the graphical representation and the other way is the numerical representation. A measure of central tendency is a single representative expression of the data. In this section, we shall uh, learn uh, the measures of central tendency and their methods of calculation. Data can be classified as ungrouped and grouped data. This is ungrouped and grouped data. So, grouped data is a statistical term used in data analysis. The given raw data can be organized by grouping together similar measurements in a table. This frequency table is also called the grouped data. So grouped data means the data or information given in the form of class intervals, such as 0 to 20, 20 to 40, Allah unte adi grouped data. Otherwise, uh, it is an grouped data. Grouped data, for example, grouped data, grouped data. This is 2 to 4, the lower limit and upper limit. The frequency is 5. 5 to 7, the frequency is 6, and so on. This is the grouped data. And the corresponding frequencies are there. Ungrouped data. This is a raw data. Numbers are there. Ungrouped data is defined as the data given as individual points. Values or numbers such as like this. One more example for scores of a batsman in last five matches are given like this. This is an ungrouped data. 
Now we want to find the mean of the ungrouped data. That means sum of all the observation divided by total number of observation. One, two, three, four, five. The mean you can find the mean also and median, median, median. The middle most term. First of all, we can arrange this data into ascending or descending order of the magnitude. 15, 20, 25, 34, 63. So the middle term may be 25. So that is the median. And uh, there is no mode because any number repeated or not repeated. So all are same number of times repeated. So that's why this is no mode. Sometimes mm, there may be one mode, uni mode, or two modes are also there, three modes also there. Okay. So ungrouped data are data that are not arranged or not organized could only be formed the highest and lowest of the lowest or highest in this systematic manner. Suppose time in seconds of 21 computers in a race. In a race, 21 computers uh, time in seconds are given. Now we want to find the mean, median mode for this data. How can you find the data? By ungrouped data and grouped data also. We are converted into a table form also for this one. This data is ungrouped data. That is raw data. Example, ungrouped data. This is ungrouped data example. Frequency 2 repeated 8 times, 3 repeated 4 times and so on. This is ungrouped data. Grouped data, ungrouped data. So, grouped data. This is the given data. Ungrouped data. This is can be converted into grouped data. Here, the minimum is 59, maximum is 67. Okay. So, I convert into a group data. Ungrouped data can be converted into a group data by tabular form. The lower limit is 35 to 55 because uh, lower 35, 53 is also there. So that 53, 55, 53, 55. This is a inclusive method table, 51 to 55. There are the frequencies to 56 to 60, 56 to 60, the blue color. There are seven members are there. 61 to 65, dark blue color, that is eight members are there. 66 to 70, there are four members, that is light blue color. This is the group of data. So ungrouped data converted into a group of data, that means table form. We already did in uh, previous uh, slides. Now I want to find, uh, this is the, in the, to, uh, in the sprint race, LX time 21 computators to the closest second. So 21 computators, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 into 3, 21 computators and their times are given. Now we want to find the mean, median and mode for the above data. Now this data can be converted into the grouped data and ungrouped data. This is first of all ungrouped data. We want to find the mean, median, mode in the ungrouped data. After that, grouped data also. Mean is the ratio of uh, the sum of all the observations by the total number of observations. That is sum of all the observations by the total number of observations. That is 61.38 is the mean. You already know that. Therefore, the mean time of the 21 players is 61.38. That means the mean time of the 21 players is 61.38. That means all the 21 members having the same mean. This is the 61.38. But some players having more than 61.38. This person having more than 61.38. 67 seconds. This is 61, which is less than. 68, greater than. 59, less than. 56, less than. So, all are, we are assumed that all the players, runners, having the same 61.38 seconds, we assume that. This is the average. And some of the players are runner, uh, runners having a more than 61.38, some are less than 61.38, and some are 61, like that, close to this 61.38. This is the average. Now the median. Median is the middlemost term. In the ascending order and descending order of the magnitude. First of all, arrange the data, given data into ascending order, 53, 55, and so on, 70. So of these, there are 11 members are the, how many, 25 members are 21, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 21 members are there. The middlemost term, 21 plus 1 by 2, that is 22 by 2, that is 11. 11 is the middlemost term, that is 61. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 
61 is the middle most term. This uh, 61 divides the entire data into two parts. Left side uh, 10 members or right side 10 members. So that's why this is the median. In the ungrouped data, don't forget that one. The median is 61. The median is 61. Here also, here the, this person divides the data into two parts. Previously, I explained this one. 1 1.65 is the median. Median height. The median height of the person. And mode. Mode is the maximum number of times repeated a number. 1.6. Similarly here, this is 1.6. From this example, now what is the mode? You are guessing this one. Maximum number of repeated a number. Maximum number of times repeated a number. 56 to 58 to 59 to 61 to 62 is 3. 68 is 2. So that uh, 62 is the mode of this data. 62 appears three times more often than the others. Therefore, mode is 2. Now, mean, median and mode for grouped frequency table. Now we are fit the group of data. Now, this is the ungrouped data. This the group of ungrouped data is converted into a group of data like this. This is the inclusion method. The frequency of 51 to 55, there are two. 51 to 55, there are two. And 56 to 60, there are seven. 56 to 70, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven members, and so on. Now, the ungrouped data is converted into a group of data. This is the frequency table. Now, with the help of the frequency table, sometimes you are giving the frequency table and uh, find the mean, median, mode. You ask the question like that. Now, this is the problem. Grouped frequency table. Here, two runners took between 51 and 55 seconds. Seven took between 56 and 60 seconds, etc. This means the table, I will explain the table about the table. Here, two runners took between 51 to 55 seconds. Seven runners took 56 to 60 seconds. Eight runners, 61 to 65. Four runners, 66 to 70. Timings. That means, here this is very important one. Two members takes 51 to 55 seconds. That means all the two members takes 51 seconds. Or all the two members takes 55 seconds. Or all the two members takes 52 seconds or 53 seconds or 54 seconds. Like that. We can assume that. So we don't know about this uh, frequency table. According to the frequency table, we don't know uh, these two members, uh, how many seconds they took uh, the time. 51 to 55 only. We don't know how many seconds they are exactly takes. Similarly, these seven members, we don't know exactly they take the time. And the eight members, we don't know exactly. All the eight members take 61 seconds. Or all the eight members take 65. Or some take 61 to 65. Or some take 63, like that. We don't know. We are guessing. That's why the uh, tabular form, the group data is only approximations only. This is not use the exact values. Only this is the uh, estimated values. The estimated mean. That's why some other cities call it as, as an estimated mean or estimated uh, median mode like that. Here, the groups 51 to 55 also call the class interval of width 5. The midpoints are in the middle of uh, each class is uh, the midpoint of this one is uh, 53. 51 midpoint calculated as sum of the lower and upper limits divided by 2. So that uh, the average of these two numbers is 53 and the average of these numbers is 58. And the average of these two numbers is 63. And the average of these two numbers is 68. So why you are taking the averages again? We are assuming. We are assuming the average. Because we don't know. These two members are taking 51 seconds or 52 seconds or 53 seconds or 54 seconds or 55 seconds. We don't know. That's why we are guessing the average of these two timings is 53, 53, like that. We are guessing, that is. Similarly, the average of these two. So, this 53, the two members takes 53 seconds. That means, the midpoint means, the two members takes average time is 53 seconds. Seven members takes 58 times, 58 seconds. 
and eight members takes 63 seconds and four members takes 68 seconds okay so if we are right uh, these uh, in the ungrouped data like this 53 53 two times and uh, 58 eight times seven, 58 uh, seven times 63 eight times and uh, 68 uh, four times we draw like that and calculate the mean also we can estimate the mean by using the midpoints. How does this work? This is a, the this is the average. We are taking the average of 51 to 55. That is 53. And uh, 56 to 60. The average is 58. Like that. And now we are multiplying. 2 times 53 appears 2 times. 58 appears 7 times. And so on. So now the formula we are using the formula in the table form is sigma fi xi by sigma fi that is the formula in the from the childhood beginning we are using the formula midpoint and frequency 53 into 2 plus 58 into 7 plus so on now we think that two people took 53 seconds seven people took 58 seconds like that so in other words we imagine the data like this 53 two times, 58 seven times, and 63 eight times, and so on. Now, again, the original data is converted it like this. Then we add them, we add up, we add them all up and divide by 21. The quick way to do it is the multiple, which uh, multiply each midpoint by each frequency. That is approximately equal to 63, 61.333. X midpoint frequency. Sigma Fx by sigma F formula. Sigma Fx by sigma F. That is 61.33. This is 61.33 is the mean of group data, which is very close to the exact answer we get earlier. Exact answer. Whoa. The exact answer. Okay, well, uh, at the end, uh, I compare all these two. So, with the help of the group data, this is the mean. Similarly, we want to find the median also. Here, the median. The formula for group data, median formula is there. The median, we all know that the median divides the series into two parts. Therefore, we must find the group in which the median class. Median class, the median formula is L plus I by F into N by 2 minus C. N, sometimes for some others, we use capital N. Capital N is the sum of the frequencies. I is the interval and the median class frequency and L is the lower limit of the median class. And very important thing here, all the classes are in exclusive method only. This is inclusive method. That means there is an error. So that in finding the median and mode, we are using the exclusive class intervals only. So that's why we'll convert it into 55.5, 55.5. 60.5, 60.5, 65.5, 5, 65.5, 5, like that. We will convert that. And the, the difference, I will show the difference also. Yeah, we can calculate the median at this time and uh, after uh, exclusion method also. This is the formula for median. L plus I by F, N by 2 minus C. L is the lower limit of the median class. I is the interval of the group. F is the frequency of the median class. N is the total number of items. And C is the cumulative frequency preceding the group uh, in which median lies. Median class, we want to find the median class, uh, the sum of uh, n by 2 plus 1. n by n by n plus 1 by 2. n plus 1 by 2 is the formula. The median is the size of 11th term. 11th term is the, we can arrange the data in uh, 21 numbers are there actually. The 11th term is the median. So in that, uh, the median is uh, lies uh, the cumulative frequency. That's why you are taking. This is the frequency to 7, 8, 4. The total is 21. 21 by 2. We are taking 21 by 2. That is 10 point something. So next integer is uh, that uh, 11. 11 is the median class. That 11 falls, 11th term. So this these two terms, 2 plus 7, that is 9 terms. 9 plus 8, 17. The 11th term lies in this interval. That's why this is called the class, median class. The 11 terms, the 11th term involved in this class, in this group, 61 to 65 group, the 11th term involved in this group. That's why this is called the median class. 
the corresponding median class frequency is f frequency f it is denoted by f and the cumulative frequency preceding the median class is 9 c l is the lower limit of the median class so we substitute these values in this uh, table that is 61.93 the median but observe this this is a inclusive method for problem this is an inclusive method this is inclusive method problem but actually what we find uh, the median in the earlier i will compare also those two note always use exclusive method of class intervals if not given the class intervals in the above example can be arranged in the following ways now it is continuous class intervals so now this is the continuous class in 55.5 like that so now again the 11th term is the median so that that falls in this class interval in this class that's why this is the median class the frequency is same and the remaining are the same and uh, now the L is 60.5. Sir. సార్ నేను మీటర్ ఆన్ చేశాను మళ్ళీ అయిందిలే కానీ సార్ మూర్తి గారు సార్ వినపడతా ఆయన చెప్తాను సార్ మీరు మ్యూట్ లో ఉన్నారు అన్మ్యూట్ చేయండి కొంచెం ఒక చేస్తే హాఫ్ మినిట్ అండి అంతే పర్లేదు కంటిన్యూ చేయండి సార్ ఓకే కంటిన్యూ చేయండి సార్ 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 వినపడతలేదు మీరు వింటున్నారా నా మాట మీ మాట వినపడతలేదు మా సార్ సారు మీరు అన్మ్యూట్ చేయండి సార్ అది మ్యూట్ అని కొట్టండి మరి మళ్ళీ క్లిక్ చేయండి దాన్ని ఇప్పుడు స్క్రీన్ వచ్చింది మీ వాయిస్ సార్ ఇప్పుడు ఏం ఇస్తుందండి ఓకే సార్ ఓకే సార్ 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 ఒక్క నిమిషం మీరు మనం ఫోర్ ఫార్టీ ఫైవ్ కట్ల వ్యాలిడిటీ పెట్టాం సార్ అయిపోద్ది సార్ ఫైవ్ మినిట్స్ ఫోర్ థర్టీ ఫైవ్ ఫోర్ ఫైవ్ టెన్ మినిట్స్ అయిపోయింది అండి ఓన్లీ టూ ఆర్ త్రీ స్లైడ్స్ ఉన్నాయి సార్ ఓకే సార్ ఓకే సార్ so previously this is 61.93 and now after a exclusive method it is 61.4375 so compare these two ungrouped data and grouped data ungrouped data is median is 61 and ungrouped grouped data with the exclusive method 61.43 and inclusive method 61.93 so that uh, this uh, exclusive method is close to the real values and coming to the mode this is the last topic of this uh, session again looking at uh, data this is the data we can easily find the model group model group is the means the highest frequency takes place that is model group model class is 61 to 65 that is the model class 61 to 65 because it has the highest frequency takes place that is the model group and uh, the uh, finding the 
mode is the former. This is that's why it is called estimated mode. Uh, previously also estimated median L plus F minus F one by F minus F one plus F minus F two into Y. I is the interval of the length, and the F one is the frequency frequency of the preceding class, and the F two is the frequency of the succeeding class, and the F is the frequency of the model class. I will show in this. This is the. And uh, first of all, we are uh, include exclusive method. We are using the exclusive method. In this, uh, the model highest frequency is eight. That is the frequency. And F one is the pre uh, pre uh, preceding frequency of the model class. And F two is the succeeding frequency of the model class. And L is the lower limit of the model class. And substitute those values. And the frequency I is equal to five. The length of these two. The difference of these two. So estimated mode is equal to. This is the estimated mode, sixty-one point five. The estimated mode is sixty-one point five. Suppose uh, if you are any question, suppose the mode is lies fourteen. Suppose here fourteen, then there is no F two because the succeeding class frequency they are not there. Then you can apply the formula for uh, other method is mode equal to three median minus two mean. With the help of uh, we are finding the mean median also. Then from those two. We can find the mode also. Okay. So overall, uh, the last slide of this one is uh, for ungrouped data. Mean is sixty-one point three eight. Median is equal to sixty-one. Mode equal to sixty-two. For grouped data, estimated mean is sixty-one point three three. Estimated median sixty-one point four five. Estimated mode sixty-one point five. So these are the grouped data. This is ungrouped data. This is the actual means. So overall, for grouped data, we can't find the exact mean, median, and mode. We can give only estimates. That's all. Any queries, please? Thank you, Muthi Garu. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your wonderful session. is very informative and reachable to the student so okay thank you sir for your lecture on descriptive statistics analyzing and visualizing data this is the time for question and answer session because of huge participants uh, any participant who is interested to clarify his or her doubts Sure, sure, sir. Please come forward to post in only in the question and answer box. Sir will clarify the same. Participants, please share your questions in the chat box or question and answer box. Muthi sir, very nice sir. Ah, uh, thank you sir, thank you sir. So our students are enlightened with your valuable talk. Thank you sir, thank you very much sir. Okay sir, Muthi sir, they will okay, ask yes, questions. Uh, we will share your PPT then. No, sure, they will sir. ask questions sir. later or if they want to contact you, they will contact you. Okay sir, okay, okay sir, okay sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. I will share Thank my. Thank you, sir. Really. For the validity function, you please yes, stay with us uh, for uh, okay, 15 more minutes. Our validity also uh, concluded. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Huh? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, Ashiru. Sir. Can we start the validity, sir? Yes, sir. Go ahead, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay, now this is time for validity function. <laughs> a very warm and healthy good evening to convener and head department of mathematics, Dr. Kevil and Achar Lagaru, my dear colleagues and participants. Thank you one and all for your great support and tremendous response for this a one week online international workshop. on enhancing computational skills of mathematics in various fields of engineering 
all the six days are engaged with six different lectures by six eminent resource persons many participants are actively participated in all the sessions we are all thankful to them for spending their precious time to deliver their beneficial lectures and also sending their valuable responses now i request our convener and head department of mathematics babatla engineering college dr kvram acharyul garu so acharyul sir to give his message Uh, good evening to all i extend a warm and heartfelt welcome to today's revered resource person dr tsr murthy garu dear esteemed faculty members and my beloved students we gather here today through online to participate in the valedictory function of our international online workshop it is with a great pleasure and a sense of accomplishment that i came here before you to deliver my convener's message on this auspicious occasion on the occasion of 136th birth anniversary celebrations of sri srinivas ramanujam we have conducted a one week international workshop on enhancing computation skills of mathematics in various fields of engineering from 18th to 23rd december 2023 this workshop is enriched with the enlightening lectures given by our revered resource persons dr l jagannathan garu dr p nagarani madam dr y n reddy garu dr n s srinivas garu dr g y sagar garu dr t s r murthy garu i am very happy to inform you that huge number of participants registered and most of them stayed with us till the completion of all sessions in every day i appreciate all participants for their interest to attend this workshop and made it a good platform for professional growth and continuous improvement when we put a proposal for conducting this international online workshop to our beloved principal sir that minute onwards our principal sir has been giving his valuable support marvelous encouragement and timely cooperation to us for conducting this workshop in an effective manner in particular we are all thankful to our magnanimous management for their continuous support and encouragement for conducting useful programs for students in view of enhancing their knowledge with computational skills in mathematics you all know that these type of programs can be succeeded only with the teamwork seamless coordination meticulous planning and collective efforts our co convener dr p vijay sardhi garu truly made this international workshop a successful one with his good efforts along with the cooperation of other staff organizers i putraj garu shrimati k nagmani garu dr m balai garu and also other faculty members in our department mc hod sri n kiran kumar garu dr k manideep garu from csc department u venugopal garu extended their timely technical support to us for making this event a successful one the aim of this program is fulfilled and became a fruitful one only because of our esteemed participants i express my sincere appreciation to each and every participant for their active participation and valuable cooperation for all sessions to make this program a grand success expecting the same response from participants in our future programs also thank you thank you one and all thank you sir thank you very much for your overall and valuable message due to some urgent and important work for our beloved principal sir he could not attend today's session even though he tried his level best our beloved principal sir conveyed his message to all of us our principal sir appreciated to all organizers dr kevaran acharyul garu డాక్టర్ పి విజయ సారథి గారు శ్రీ ఐ పోతరాజ్ గారు మిస్సెస్ కె నాగమణి డాక్టర్ ఎం బాలయ్య ఆఫ్ దిస్ ఇంటర్నేషనల్ ఆన్లైన్ వర్క్ షాప్ ఎన్హాన్సింగ్ కంప్యూటేషనల్ స్కిల్స్ ఆఫ్ మ్యాథమెటిక్స్ ఇన్ వేరియస్ ఫీల్డ్స్ ఆఫ్ ఇంజనీరింగ్ ఫర్ కండక్టింగ్ యూస్ఫుల్ అండ్ వాల్యుబుల్ ప్రోగ్రామ్ విత్ ఏ హ్యూజ్ నెంబర్ ఆఫ్ పార్టిసిపెంట్స్ మోర్ దాన్ ఎయిట్ ఫిఫ్టీ ఎవ్రీ డే హీ ఈస్ ఇంప్రెస్డ్ విత్ ద టీమ్ వర్క్ ఆఫ్ ECS MVFE 23 for their planning execution and special care in all aspects principal sir wishes a few more student oriented programs from department of mathematics in future and also to enhance the name and fame of our babatla engineering college with the same spirit and team work 
principal sir conveyed his special thanks to all resource persons for their valuable lectures sir also conveyed his best wishes to all the participants he expects that all students should come forward and utilize these opportunities to enrich, to enrich their knowledge from revered and eminent resource persons in future programs also thank you very much to our principal sir for your inspiring message now i request one of our senior faculty members dr t srinivas rao garu associate professor to address the gathering on this memorable day so oh, respected principal dr sheikh nazir garu uh, beloved head of the department of mathematics dr k vilan acharya garu esteemed organizers and active participants of this uh, international workshop a good evening to all today we all are uh, here for the valedictory function of our international workshop on enhancing computational skills of mathematics in various uh, fields of engineering as a part of 136th birth anniversary celebrations of a great indian mathematician sri srinivas ramanujan as one of the senior member of this department i am delighted by the dedication and enthusiasm shown by each participant throughout this workshop attending to such kind of workshops provide a chance to interact with experts from specific field and also students will gain the knowledge about latest information and new skills in the concerned subject i extend my sincere appreciation to the organizers facilitators and all participants who have contributed to the success of this international workshop the success of this workshop is the combined effort of our visionary management advanced and informative lectures delivered by the eminent resource persons from national and international institutions valuable guidance by our dynamic principal dr nazir garu meticulous planning by our head of the department dr kevel nacharul garu proper execution and sincere efforts put by our co convener dr p vijay sarathi garu and his team members dr m balai garu sri i potraj garu and uh, shrimati k nagamani garu and last but not least the cooperation extended by all our faculty members of uh, mathematics department congratulations to each and every one of you on the successful completion of this uh, international workshop thank you one and all for giving me this opportunity thank you thank you sir thank you very much sir thank you very much sir for your speech okay it is time to know the responses from our participants now i request the participants please give your give your valuable opinions or options about this international workshop name of the student sir they came forward and gave their names sir so please call them one by one okay sir so i am calling them one minute sir so the name mr m sivateja ita m sivateja ita please come forward to speak m sivateja next is k shankar triple e b k shankar triple e b 
students please put your audio as mute so it is m bhanu teja amlb m bhanu teja amlb good evening to everyone sir okay okay ma speak good evening to who attend that the and the dignitaries and the students sir we have please go ahead tell your opinion we are listening to all these all these sessions sir and we have get the some knowledge from this we have gained some knowledge chaala nechukundam sir din nunchi idi maaku baaga upayogapadindi ee one week session anedi very nice very nice okay nice amma nice ee session attend ayinanduku koncham knowledge gain chestam studies lo very nice bang teja actually that is the aim of this workshop ah yes sir okay thank you thank you sir. thank you the next one b chantu triple a speaking sir i'm okay. k sanger from triple a b sir okay speak sir sir this class sir very useful to us sir we have gained a lot of knowledge this is one big sessions we are and we are able to experience a new new way of listening of classes sir okay and experience the new new logics and uh, tricks of mathematics sir good okay thank you thank you good evening sir i am b chintu from tribli a i am attending okay. all sessions these sessions are very useful to us um thank you sir for giving this opportunity good evening sir professor teja from ict department okay is your name so before going to tell you your opinion please tell you your name and uh, session sir can you listen me ah, yes sir please yes, please, yes, please yes. carry on yes, i present after no table first i would like to thank you for giving me this opportunity and it's my present to introduce about the great aspects workshop myself shyoteja and from it department coming to about program it was an impressive program for the students about the awareness of present technology sector trend already we know that the present trend runs on artificial intelligence like chat gpt these models are stands on completely mathematical operations and analytical program so i request respected management to conduct much more workshop and deliver a quality content to students for the future aspirants definitely sir can you listen next one next one p meeramma sir second ma'am k duryodhana from sir i am k duryodhana from tribli a okay please speak loudly so we can sir, easily i am k duryodhana from tribli a section sir okay sir this classes is very that sir this classes is more valuable to all students okay okay speak sir you are sir, sir you are giving more important and valuable to the classes sir ee class lo we attendant prathi okkar ki ivi chaala important ayi ante life lo telusukuntar konni tricks max max lo ela mundukellali ela cheskunte vastadi ani easy way lo ellochu ivi chuste good okay amma thank you thank you for giving this opportunity sir thank you sir okay next p p p meeramma second msc good evening sir choose 
good evening sir my name is uh, sadvik from triple e section sir i am attending all sections are very useful for sir today we have to tell for the data secondary data sir then examples is to very much sir thank you for giving this great for opportunity sir okay so if anybody is interested to come forward please feel free to uh, tell your opinion Sir, sir, one by one. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. From IT B section, I am R Rana Malika Jana. Okay. I am participating in every section. The workshop oh. is a great way to expand our knowledge. Good. Thank you, sir, for providing this opportunity. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Good morning. Nice. Uh, Okay, speak louder. I am P. Miramma, studying second MSc in Bapatla Engineering College. I have attended all the sessions of international workshop. I learned so many things which are useful for us. Thanking you very much for organizers. Thank, Thank you. you. Sir, I am K. Yes. Deshup, Tripoli A section, sir. Okay. I have attended all the sessions. The sessions which are held are very useful for the students. And we will be very thankful for our HOD sir and the other organizers. I have gained some knowledge from these sessions. Good. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Jeevan Pradeep. Okay. Next. Good evening, Good evening sir. to the HOD sir. I am Manjula from ITA section. I am here to express my view on classes held since 18, 12, 23. I have been attending to the classes. Which helped me to gain knowledge, which will be used for further three years. I thank my college, Bapatla Education Society, and my principal and a head coach for giving me the opportunity to learn and gain. Thank you, Ananda. Our education society always stands behind us to conduct any useful program to our students. Okay, next speaker. Good evening, sir. From ITB, I am Mr. Madhavi. Attending every season is beneficial for expanding our knowledge, as the workshop is well designed. I am very grateful for this op opportunity, sir. Thank you, sir. Good. Next one. Hi, sir. This is. Please say your name and class. Sir, my name is Kandul Narsimhara from AML A section, sir. I would like to express my gratitude for your excellent mathematical workshop. It was a very informative and engaging, and I learned a lot of new concepts and way of techniques. You have a great way of explaining complex topics in a clear and concise manner. I have. Time and effort in preparing and delivering this workshop, and I would like to thank you to our expeditor and to our conducting the international workshop for one week. It uh, is pleasant to me, sir, and thanks for giving wonderful opportunity to me. Thank you so much. Sir. Good. Okay, thank you. Next Good participant. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Okay. I am Aishwarya, AMLB. I am sure it is very useful in my education that many programs will be conducted in futures, which will be very useful. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity to conduct uh, workshops like many. Thank you. Okay. So all Next of one. you come forward. We are ready to conduct uh, useful programs for our students. Good evening, respected sirs and my friends. My name is Preeti Rajni from First Year Triple B. It is very useful for us. We can learn new things which we can't learn in our classes. Thank you for giving this opportunity. Good. Thank you. Next one. Emra, Nisha, studying second MSc in BC Bapatla Engineering College. Actually, we are having lack of lack of computational skills in mathematics. By attending this workshop, I got an more moral view to my computing skills. All sections are very 
thank you sir for giving so our intention is also to create awareness on computational skills so then only if we attend these programs we can enhance your computing skills so that is the purpose of this workshop sir okay next one please audience please maintain silence it is pitch yale ipudu alage and then bowling up with the pt phone is not sitting there adi please mute your cell phone next speaker please good afternoon sir i am kerahu please speak please speak loudly good afternoon sir i am k rahul okay so i request uh, I all other participants please put your audio mute then only we can clearly hear the opinion good afternoon sir i am from i am k rahul uh, i am from first year triple b uh, i will attend the all classes and uh, mostly useful the class most Use for the classes on the most important top topics. I will learn. I will learn. From, I will gain some knowledge and valuable time to uh, take your classes. And more and more classes. I will learn, sir. Okay. Thank you, Rahul. Next speaker, please. Good evening, everyone. First year IT department. Thank you for conducting this workshop. As we got to know a lot of things from this, it will be very beneficial for us. Thank What you. What is your name? What is your name? Geeta Anjali. Hmm. Okay. Speak. Thank you for conducting this workshop. As we got to know a lot of things from this. uh it will be very beneficial for us for our rest three years of btech thank you next to k satvik triple a k satvik triple a k duryodhana triple a i pay na i pay na so any other participant so if you want to share your opinion please come forward okay sir okay sir okay thank you all participants for spending time with us thank you very much today's good evening we are going to conclude the today's session sir one minute sir somebody is speaking okay sir anybody else to share your opinion good evening sir good evening sir from please please carry on Good evening, sir. My name is K Lakshmi Narayana from Third Mechanical B Section. This workshop is useful for mechanical students. Very lot of knowledge gained this workshop. Thank you for the given opportunity, sir. Okay. Thank you. Good evening, sir. My name Please. is Sudha Rani, Cyber Security First Year. Good. we will gain more knowledge about this classes it is very helpful for all of us thank you for giving this opportunity sir good thank you i felt very good evening sir second year eca second year eca please come forward and tell your opinion on our international workshop we will learn more about this session so you learned about uh, computation skills in various fields of engineering yes okay good
I was very delightful for listening all the classes uh, of the teachers in the international workshop in mathematics. On this occasion, uh, uh, we have gotten very knowledge about mathematics through uh, through it, and this is very enlightening. And uh, this is okay. Don't feel feel free to speak. Very nice. Please come forward and tell your opinion. Good evening, sir. My sir. Good evening, sir. Respect. Good evening. My sir. From cyber security uh, department. We are very glad to have such workshops which improve our knowledge. We want to thankful our management of Bapatla Engineering College. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Good evening, sir. I am second year cyber security, Ruk sir. I am very glad to have this session, sir. I am very okay. thankful to our uh, BE's management. I have al already attended the all yeah. sessions. First, I thought it was only for second first years, but uh, as soon as I know that uh, it is also for all the years, and it is useful for our further studies also. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Good evening, sir. My name is Mohan. Second year, triple E. I have yes, attended please. all these sections. I have attended all these sections. I will gain more and more knowledge. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank thank you Mohan. Good. Thank you. Next. I'm Sai, sir, from Mechanical Section B. Hello, sir. Please speak loudly. I'm Sai, sir, from Mechanical Section B, sir. Okay. Thanks for conducting the workshop. Some experience and knowledge and also various skills, sir, from this workshop. Thank you, Sai. Thank you, Sai. And remember that we have to support. So, if anybody is interested to give your opinion, please come forward and tell your opinion. Okay, sir. Sarju, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. So, before going to conclude, listen one thing. As you all know that many student-oriented programs are organizing in our campus, which are also streaming our, in our college YouTube channel. It has a treasure of many useful videos. Hence, it is suggested to all to subscribe to our college YouTube channel. Okay, thank you all. Today's session concludes with word of thanks by our staff organizer, Respected Principal Sir, Dr. Najir Sheikh Garu, our beloved HOD, Dr. Kevin Lachar Ligaru, Honorable Resource Persons, my dear fellow faculty members and participants, good evening to all. It's my privilege to propose the vote of thanks to all who have helped us in making this workshop such a resounding success. First of all, I would like to express my sincere thanks to our management and the principal sir for their encouragement and providing us all the necessary facilities for conducting this workshop smoothly and successfully. I would also like to thank our beloved head of the department, Dr. Kevin Lachar Ligaru, for his constant support and guidance throughout this workshop. I would like to thank our distinguished resource persons, Dr. L. Jagannathan Garu, Dr. P. Nagarani Madam, Dr. Y. N. Reddy Garu, uh, 
డాక్టర్ ఎంఏఎస్ శ్రీనివాస్ గారు డాక్టర్ జీవై సాగర్ గారు డాక్టర్ టిఎస్ఆర్ మూర్తి గారు ఫర్ గివింగ్ ఎక్సలెంట్ ప్రెజెంటేషన్స్ అండ్ మేకింగ్ దిస్ వర్క్ షాప్ సో ఇంట్రెస్టింగ్ అండ్ మీనింగ్ఫుల్ ఐ ఆమ్ హ్యాపీ టు ఎక్స్ప్రెస్ మై సిన్సియర్ థ్యాంక్స్ టు అవర్ ఫ్యాకల్టీ మెంబర్స్ హూ హ్యావ్ మేడ్ దిస్ వర్క్ షాప్ ఎ గ్రాండ్ సక్సెస్ విత్ దేర్ కోఆపరేషన్ ఇన్ ఆల్ ద ఆస్పెక్ట్స్ ఐ వుడ్ లైక్ టు థ్యాంక్ శ్రీ ఎన్ కిరణ్ కుమార్ గారు హెచ్ఓడి ఆఫ్ ఎంసీఏ డాక్టర్ కె మణిదీప్ గారు ఫ్యాకల్టీ ఆఫ్ సిఎస్ఈ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ శ్రీ బిఏవి కృష్ణారావు గారు డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ ఐటి బాబుర్లా ఇంజనీరింగ్ కాలేజ్ శ్రీ ఏ సాయి కిషోర్ గారు అండ్ శ్రీ యు వేణుగోపాల్ గారు హూ ఎక్స్టెండెడ్ దేర్ టెక్నికల్ సపోర్ట్ ఇన్ కండక్టింగ్ దిస్ వర్క్ షాప్ స్మూత్లీ లాస్ట్ బట్ నాట్ లీస్ట్ ఐ థ్యాంక్ ఆల్ ద పార్టిసిపెంట్స్ హూ హ్యావ్ టెర్డ్ అప్ ఇన్ సచ్ ఎ గ్రేట్ నెంబర్ ఫ్రమ్ డిఫరెంట్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూషన్స్ అక్రాస్ ద కంట్రీ ఫర్ అటెండింగ్ దిస్ వర్క్ షాప్ థ్యాంక్ యూ వన్ అండ్ thank you potraju and thank you all the participants without your cooperation this is this may not be a successful one thank all of you please cooperate with us in few, our in our future endeavors also so thank you all so all lectures are available in our youtube channel so across the world they can see it okay sir murti garu yes sir sir okay sir thank you sir thank, thank you very much sir. for staying with us thank you thank you sir thank you thank you for your nice lecture also so we need your valuable support and cooperation in our future endeavors also sir surely sir surely sir surely thank you thank you sir throughout this program sir digar always touch with me sir yes sir okay. yes sir thank you thank you sir thank you very much okay sir okay sir bye sir bye 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 thank you sir thank you all thank you, thank you.